What's up guys and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be giving you guys a bit of a beginner's guide slash tutorial uh, of the On AVAX project. Now what is On AVAX? First off, On AVAX is a DEX or decentralized exchange built over on the Avalanche network and it was built by the team over at Swapsicle and on XRP. Both very established uh, projects and protocols at the moment. Now, their main goal was to go ahead and provide utility to XRPL tokens and their holders. And the way that they have achieved this is through creating a bridge to allow uh, users of the XRP community to bridge their XRPL tokens over to Avalanche. And then on Avalanche, they can use the OnAvax uh, DEX to put those tokens to work in liquidity pools and farms in order to add some nice APRs. So that's sort of a bit of a gist of things. Um, so without further ado, let's actually get into the setup and what you will need. First off, you're going to need a MetaMask wallet. Now you're probably sick and tired of me mentioning MetaMask, but it is absolutely essential if you want to go ahead and connect and interact with pretty much any DEX or DeFi projects. Um, so yeah, I might be going a bit, but it is essential. If you've got one set up, no worries, we can keep going through with the tutorial. If you haven't got one set up yet, I will leave a link in the video description to a video I made previously showing you how to get one of those set up properly. Um, so if you haven't done that already, please pause this video, check that video down below and make sure you've got it installed. So once you've got your MetaMask wallet installed, you need to add the Avalanche network to your wallet. Now by default, when you've just set it up, it will only have the Ethereum mainnet, which is no use when wanting to interact with a project built over on Avalanche. So how do we add the Avalanche network? We click on the networks pull down, we click add network here at the bottom, and it will forward us to five boxes which need to be filled out. Over on the Avalanche support page, it shows us what we need to fill into each one of those boxes. So I will go ahead and leave a link down below to this page. Um, it's really simple. You copy and paste each one of these pieces of text into the desired box, click saved, and you will have added it to your MetaMask. Now, the third bit of this setup that we need to do is we need some AVAX, right? No matter if you're someone who's only just getting into XRP tokens, or if you've already got XRPL tokens you want to bridge over, you are going to need AVAX in order to facilitate the transactions. So you're going to always need some AVAX in your wallet. Now, you can use any exchange for this. I use KuCoin, I always have used KuCoin, and I really enjoy it. But you can use Coinbase, you can use Crypts.com, you can use Binance, it doesn't matter. The only thing that really matters is it supports the AVAX C chain, right? So, say we're in KuCoin and we've bought some AVAX. We've selected AVAX to withdraw, and now we can add our withdrawal address. So we can head up to MetaMask, copy it, and paste it in like that. But there are two networks. There's the Avalanche network and the AVAX C chain. The Avalanche network is only used for validator nodes and securing the network. AVAX C chain is where every single decentralized Avalanche project is built. So you really want to make sure that when you withdraw your funds, you are withdrawing to the AVAX C chain. That is what MetaMask uses. So that's, that's the one thing with this process you've got to watch out for. Make sure it's the AVAX C chain. Then you can go ahead and specify your amount, like a thousand AVAX, whatever. Uh, click withdraw. And hopefully within a couple of seconds to at the most a couple of minutes, you should see your AVAX show up in your wallet. We head over to Avalanche. Your AVAX should be in your wallet. So at this point, we are done with the MetaMask setup. You should have one set up, you should have the Avalanche network added, and you should have some AVAX or gas fees, or if you want to invest without being an XRPL token holder, add whatever dollar amount you want to invest into the project. Um, so relatively easy to sort of get your head around, but that's the three essential components that you need to go ahead and get set up uh, in order to basically carry on with this video. So please, if you haven't got every single one of these set up, go do so now. Now, let's say you already have XRPL tokens that you want to go ahead and use on AVAX. On, on AVAX? 
I think it's on, on AVAX. You're going to have to go ahead and bridge those XRPL tokens over. And that is done using the on XRP bridge. Super easy to use, but I'll take you through it quickly. First of all, you've got to specify where you're sending from and when you're sending to. So in this case, we're sending from XRP Ledger to the Avalanche network. And we can select whatever token on a bridge, let's say XRP. Now what we're going to do is connect our wallet and you have to get a Zoom wallet set up um, in order to be able to actually make this work. But I presume if you've got XRPL tokens to go ahead and bridge over, you've probably already got a Zoom wallet set up. Now, after you've connected the wallet, you've got to do two, uh, two things. First off, you've got to paste in your MetaMask wallet address. You do not connect both wallets at the same time. You only connect the wallet which is where you're sending from and you have to manually paste in the wallet you're sending to, in this case, our MetaMask wallet. Similar to KuCoin, please make sure you paste this incorrectly because if one thing is wrong, your funds are gone, right? Make sure you paste it incorrectly. Uh, oh, it paste it incorrectly. Um, once you've gone ahead and pasted your address in, you can do ahead and confirm the transaction um, using AVAX. That's why it's so important to have AVAX in your wallet. And then you just have to wait for the XRPL tokens to show up over in your MetaMask wallet. So now we have that all specified. We can actually head over to the on AVAX DEX. This is what it looks like. I think it's a super clean looking website. Um, and I think most people would agree with me there. Now, the first tab you get redirected to is the dashboard, which basically combines every aspect into one page. We're not actually going to start here because we want to start. I want, I want this to be a bit more of a deeper breakdown. So we're going to start off with the swap. If you've ever used a decentralized exchange before on any network, this is going to be pretty familiar to you, right? It allows you to trade between one token and another in a decentralized manner. So say, for example, we want to go ahead and select switch AVAX to OVX token. We just hit max and we can go ahead and confirm the transaction and it will go ahead and facilitate that transaction. And we would go ahead and give them AVAX and we would receive OVX. Pretty simple. There's a lot of tokens that are supported, which are very cool. There's also this settings wheel at the top. Now, the reason I'm going to mention the settings wheel is the most popular issue that goes wrong with people when trying to use a DEX is failed swaps and transactions. Usually, that is caused by their slippage being too low. By default, it's half a percent. If that fails consistently, you might have to up it to 1%. In a rarer ca case where that doesn't work or still doesn't work, you might want to up it to 2%. If after 2%, the transactions are still failing, it's not a slippage issue, it's, an, it, it's something else, right? You should not have to go above 0.2. I'm going to leave it on default because 99% of the time, half a percent will work just fine. Um, but that's the swap. If you've used a swap or a DEX before, you'll be very familiar with it. Next, we have the pool tab. Now, in order for people to be able to swap on an exchange, users have to provide liquidity. So say, for example, a user wants to trade between the OVX and the AVAX tokens, then there's going to have to be users who have deposited 50% of each token into this pool. And that's how the trades take place. Now, all LP or pool providing has to be done in a 50-50 balance because the pool always has to be balanced. So say using the OVX and AVAX pair again, say you want to go ahead and provide liquidity to this pair and you want to invest $100, you would have to split that $100 into $50-50 and then provide liquidity. And that's based off current market dollar value. Um, so please be aware of that. You can't have an unweighted pool. You can't just add AVAX, for example, into the AVAX or the X pair. Has to be 50 50 split. Now you're probably wondering why would you provide liquidity other than just being a kind person and helping out the decks? Well, every time a swap takes place on AVAX, takes a small fee. Part of that fee is actually distributed to LP providers. So, say for example, uh, you are an LP provider in the OVX. W AVAX pool. Anytime someone tra like trades between those two tokens, 
you get a small amount of that fee in the form of your LP tokens becoming more valuable. What are LP tokens? LP tokens are practically a receipt. When you provide the liquidity, you get LP tokens acting as a receipt that you went ahead and added the liquidity. So that's a huge incentive is for those fees collected. If you're going to hold OVX and AVAX in the long term anyway, why not add them to a pool and earn a small APR on top of them? It's a win-win for everyone. Now, next we're going to go to the Farms tab because this correlates quite well with the pool. When you pull tokens, you receive LP tokens. What you can do is for certain pairs, not all pairs, certain pairs, you can stake those LP tokens for even more rewards. Uh, the rewards are paid out in OVX, which are the native tokens for the on AVAX decks. So this is basically doubling up your money. You can go to the pool, you can deposit OVX and wrapped AVAX in a 50-50 pairing, receive those LP tokens. Meanwhile, it's still earning the fees. And you can then stake those LP tokens in a farm in order to get a higher APR paid out in OVX tokens. So you're getting two APRs paid out for the same investment. Absolutely insane. Now, with the pool tab, certain ones are highlighted by default. But you can go ahead and add liquidity and select any token you want, right? We can have uh, Aave P5 pair, right? Pretty useless, but you can go ahead and add whatever you want to the pool. You're creating a new pool. With the farms, that's not the case. The team decides what pairs get a farm and what their uh, rewards and APR are going to be because it depends on the OVX emission. If you could, anyone could make a farm, it would be total chaos and there would be OVX tokens flying everywhere. So if you want to get the highest APR, then make sure you provide liquidity for one of the pools or one of it into a pool which also has their own farm. That way you can earn fees from the LP providing and OVX tokens from staking those to, uh, those to LP tokens in the farm. That's the way to get the highest reward, double APRs. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the single-sided staking. Now, as I said, uh, OVX is the native token for the on Avalanche uh, network uh, DEX, um, and it, it almost acts as a share of the, of the DEX. Um, what you can do is you can actually single-sided stake these OVX tokens, turning them from OVX tokens to S OVX tokens, the S just standing for state. Now, how is this APR collected? Well, I mentioned that there is a fee collected every time people swap. A portion goes to the LP provider for that pool, but a small amount also goes to people who have staked the OVX token. Now, it's not, the, the rewards aren't distributed in a, fashion you might be used to. Your S OVX balance never ever changes in quantity unless you add or remove. But the rewards aren't accumulated in more and more quantity of S OVX. You don't get paid out in a stable coin like a few projects do. It works based off a multiplier exchange rate system. So at launch, it will be a one to one. But as fees are collected, that'll go to one to 1 1.5, one to two over time. So, say for example, you have a hundred OVX tokens, which you stake at launch when it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That means you would receive a hundred S OVX tokens. That OVX or S OVX token balance will not change. What will change is the multiplier. So, what could happen is in a year's time, that multiplier is a one-to-two, meaning when you unstake, you will have two hundred. OVX tokens, 100 more than when you staked. So to put it simply, you have to unstake to realize your gains. One thing to also bear in mind is the multiplier works both ways when you stake and unstake. Um, lots of people with this sort of system think that they get to always stake at a one-to-one -one ratio and then unstake using the multiplier. That's not the case. Otherwise, you'd be able to print infinite money. The multiplier works both ways, right? You go ahead and divide when you stake and times when you unstake. Um, so a little difficult to get your head around, but within a couple of weeks of using the project, you'll start to see how things work. Um, and it's it's a very neat way of applying this, this APR system. 
Now, finally, we can head over to the dashboard. There's nothing new to talk about here. Um, it basically just summarizes all of the tabs up top. So we've got our little swap bubble, our little staking bubble. We can see the liquidity pools that we've provided liquidity for. We can also add liquidity ourselves. We can see some default pools and we can also see some of the farms and also what farms we're invested in. So say you've gone ahead and already know a lot about the project, you've invested quite a bit into it. This is a great place to just go ahead and get a general overview uh, of your investments, um, which I think is very, very neat. And I think more platforms should do this. I'm sick and tired of clicking through tabs. Let me see it all on one page. So I, I think in general, the team over on at on XRP and Swap School did an amazing job with this DEX. It looks stunning. Um, the concept behind bridging XRPL tokens over to the Avalanche to give them utility, I think is amazing. Uh, and I'm really excited to see where this can go. So that is all for today. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It doesn't take much time for you, but it helps me out uh, enormously. If you have any questions, I know there will be questions because this is quite a bit to get your head around if you're new. Please put them down below in the comment section. I'll reply to them within 24 hours. Um, you can also go ahead and hit up the Discord servers um, and the people over there are more than willing to help you out, no matter how stupid you might think the question is. So hopefully this video gives you a bit of an overview of how the decks will work. If there's still a few questions, don't be afraid to come forward and ask them because we are more than happy to help people out uh, with any questions or concerns they might have. So I hope you enjoy this one. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.